This video is a fastness series that's going to show you how you can do structural equation modelling in R using the Levant package. What we're going to do today is a very basic structural equation model. It's not going to have latent variables in it or so on. I'm just going to show you the real basics of using Levant. So the Levant package is an excellent package for structural equation modelling. It's really clear and straightforward to use. We're going to use this package and we'll need a read Excel package. If you haven't installed those packages, you'll need to do so now. If not, you just need to pull them out of your library. I'm also going to turn off scientific notation and I'm going to read in the data. So as usual, this is the path for the data set on my computer. You'll have to use it for your own path in your computer set up differently. It's an Excel package, so we need to use the read Excel command and the data is linked below this video. I'm just going to read it in. I'm just going to call it DF. Data frame. Let's run that in. Let's view our data. We're not going to use all this, but what we've got, we're going to look at these four variables at the end. We've got our participants BMI, the body mass index. We've got score on a scale that measures eating to cope, so it's the extent to which people eat and they have to deal with negative effect. And drinking to cope, the extent to which people drink alcohol to deal with negative effect. And then DASS final, which is the depression, anxiety, and stress scale, which gives a total score for their overall mental distress. And we're looking at a model that looks like this. As you can see, it's a straightforward model. We want to see the extent to which mental distress is measured by the DAS, is associated with eating to cope and drinking to cope, and the extent to which these all predict body mass index. So we're going to build that model in Levant. So the first thing we need to do is simply name what we're going to call our model. I'm just going to call it model one. You can call it anything you like. And then we just need to put in these apostrophes and the model sits between, has to sit in between these apostrophes. On my computer, because of the color coding I've got, it's going to be like a turquoise color, my model. So basically what we need to do is just set out this in terms of a series of regressions. And it's just like any regression that you do in R, you just write the DV, tilde and then the predictors so if you look at our model again let's have a look what we need to do is the extent to which the das predicts eating to cope so to do that eating to cope is the dependent variable then we've got tilde then our das final score then do this a new line we want to look at das predicting drinking to cope so similar thing there so drinking to cope but it's by the das now as you can see for predicting the body mass index predicting bmi we've got three arrows going into that so what we need to do is we write our dependent variable name first so we write bmi tilde then eating to cope and drinking to cope and that's fine and we can do pluses between them because we've got a series of predicted and that's all we need to do to set up the model that is the code for the picture of the model that we've got so we can run that and do anything particularly but we've got model one and that's the structure of it so then we say fit one we're going to call the fitted model fit one again you can call it anything you like and we've got so we want a structural equation model and we're going to use model one what we just created there and our data is df is our data frame so we're going to fit model one to that data frame and we're going to call that fit one and now we've done that we can ask for a summary of our model there is some extra stuff we shouldn't just ask for summary fit one we could also ask for standardized equals true this will give us standardized regression coefficients confidence intervals equals true that's going to give us our confidence intervals for our regression coefficients and importantly fit measures equals true this will do all the model fit measures for us as well. So then we can run that. And that's our model created and fitted. So let's just make this a bit bigger and let's see what we've got. First thing we get is the number of model parameters and so on, sample size, etc. Then we've got lots of model fit indices. First model fit indices is our chi squared test. So the chi squared test, you'd want that to be non-significant which means the model fits 
However, it's not often used because in bigger structural models, it's almost inevitably highly significant. However, in this case, because it's a nice simple model, as you can see, it's non-significant, so it fits. There's also a norm chi-squared statistic that people often report, and we'll do that as an example. In this case, it's spectacularly uninteresting because it's the, the chi-squared statistic divided by its degrees of freedom. Well, the degrees of freedom for this model is one. So it's the same as the chi-squared statistic, so rather dull. Next model fit they're interested in is the comparative fit index, the CFI. We want that to be above 0.95 for a good fit, as you can see it certainly is. Took a Lewis index, again we want that to be above 0.95, and as you can see it is as well. AIC and BIC are for model comparisons, um, we've got no models to compare it to, so we can ignore them. Root mean square error of approximation, or Ramsey as it's often called, we want that to be below 0 0.06, again it is, that's a good fit. And finally, the standardized root mean residual, the SRMR, we want that to be below 0 0.08, and again, it is. So all these fit indices say the model is a good fit. Now, there's lots of arguments about what's an appropriate level of fit, um, and this video is not the place to do that. There's lots of debates on that, and it's not the place to go into this now, but you should really look up a lot more into model fits than just me briefly covering these now. However, we could just write this up and say something like overall the model was a good fit for the data. We can report our norm chi squared, our comparative fit index, our Tucker Lewis index, standardized root mean residual, and Ramsey. So our model fits. Next thing we've got we're interested in is the regressions here. So these are the regressions that we predicted in our model, these associations. Eating to cope, predicted by the DAS scores. Drinking to cope, predicted by DAS scores, and BMI, predicted by eating to cope, drinking to cope, and DAS scores. So let's look at each of those associations. Now, as we can see, this is the association between DAS scores and eating to cope. There's a statistically significant positive association between DAS scores and eating to cope. And we've got our regression coefficient, a standard error, a p value, confidence intervals. You see there's two sets of standardized statistics. These are the ones that we should be reporting. So as you can see, we have a significant positive association between mental distress, our DAS scores, and eating to cope. And again, we also see there's a significant positive association between DAS scores and drinking to cope. So those first two lines that we have in our model are significant. Next, what predicts BMI? Eating to cope. Again, with eating to go, we see there's a significant positive association between eating to cope and BMI. However, drinking to cope does not have a significant association with BMI, and DAS scores also do not have a direct association with BMI. So we can write these up as regression coefficient along with a standard error, the confidence intervals, and the p-value. Often, the other thing that we'll see as well would be a model that looks something like this, in which the standardized regression coefficients have been used. Um, often, the standardized regression coefficients in these models, when they're drawn, just because it takes up a bit less space, because you have to put the regression coefficients and its standard error as well. But as I say, you just write them up as regressions. These are just regressions. And that's the real basics of structural equation modeling. It's relatively straightforward to do in Levan. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can compute some indirect effects in this model before we move on to doing some more modeling, including latent variables. As ever, the data and the code for this are below.